Hey, welcome to another video. Today we will create a marching squares setup in Blender with geometry nodes. Marching squares is an algorithm to create lines or surfaces based on an ISO value. It is useful to create meshes for 2D caves, to visualize height maps or to create the ISO lines of weather maps. The final node group will allow you to create face islands or lines based on 2D and 3D meshes. Okay, so how does it work or how will we approach the marching squares? We will sample a field on a geometry. This field can be a noise, an image or any other data. For each point of the geometry, we will assign a field value. If the value is above a certain threshold, then the point will be marked as active. This threshold is called ISO value. Then we will calculate a bit mask value for every face of the geometry, assuming that every face has four points. We will go to the four vertices of each face. This gives us 16 possible values, ranging from 0 to 15. Those values are based on the active vertices of each face. Vertex 0 gets the value 1, vertex 1 is the value 2, vertex 2 gets the value 4, and vertex 3 the value 8. Depending on which of the vertices are active, we get a bit mask value. Based on the bit mask value, we will pick a geometry out of some predefined shapes. Those shapes are constructed by dividing the original face once and then deleting non-needed vertices. This allows us to use the marching squares node group on 2D and 3D geometries. So let's start. To make things easier we will create a little debug shape first. We will use this shape to create our lookup table where we will store all the predefined shapes. I am adding a grid which is one by one and has four vertices. We will use this grid to create the lookup table elements by activating and deactivating vertices manually. Later this will be done by comparing our field to the ISO value. First let's add four boolean inputs, calling them vert0 to 3. Now let's store the active state on our geometry. First we will store the active value for vertex 0. For this we first need to get the vertex which has the index 0. We compare our vertices field to the value of 0. If it is equal to 0 it will be true. Right now it will always output true. But we only want to have it true if our input for vertex 0 is also true. So let's add an end node. Now the value is only true if both conditions are true. With a viewer node we can check if our setup is working. Looking fine. So now let's create the same setup for all the other three inputs and connect them to OR statements. We will store our attribute and name it active. To easily visualize which of the vertices are on, we will instantiate a disk on the active vertices. Now we have our debugging shape ready. Now we will calculate the bit mask value and store it on each face. Now 
add a sample index node and set it to boolean. The domain is face corner. We will sample our active attribute with this node. We need to sample each of the four corners of each face. For this we can use the corners of face node. Connect it to the index. We will connect the output to a switch. The switch will output 0 or 1. We now need to repeat the setup for the other three vertices. For vertex 1 we set the output value to 2, vertex 2 gets 4 and vertex 3 gets 8. On each sample index node we need to set the sort index to the corresponding vertex and then wire up everything nicely. Now it is time to add all the values together and store it as an integer value per face. I already created this node. At the moment it is not working as intended. Our input vertices don't correspond to the actual face corner vertices of our debug shape. So to fix this we need to flip some of our inputs. Vertex 2 needs to be vertex 1, vertex 1 needs to be vertex 3, and vertex 3 needs to be vertex 2. This is because the vertex order of the grid isn't the same order as the face corners. Now with the fixed vertex order everything works as expected. Now it is time to create our marching squares node group. We add two inputs, one for the field, another one for the ISO value. And we will compare the field to the ISO value. Then we store the result as the active attribute. We remove the active attribute from outside of the node tree. Instead we connect the field directly to our field input. This will break our debug shape because it relies on the active attribute. We can fix it by connecting it to the input of our marching squares node group. We will use the last output of our OR nodes to change the active state of our circles. Before we can start with our lookup table we need to split all faces of our geometry. Then we will subdivide them and assign each face of the subdivided geometry index from 0 to 3. This allows us to access all the four faces of a subdivided face inside of our lookup table. First, let's add a split edges node. Right now this has no effect, but later when we have a continuous mesh, this splits all faces. Then we will subdivide our geometry once. Now it is time to store the index of each face as an integer. By subdividing our base geometry we created four faces. We will use those four faces to generate the lookup table shapes by deleting not needed vertices. We will store the face index by using an index of corner node. After storing the face index it is time to split our faces again. Now we will store each vertex for each face. First we capture the index as a face corner attribute then we store it as a point attribute. For this we use the index attribute. By default we now get 16 face corners since we have 16 vertices. But we only want the indices 0 to 3 for each face. 
To fix this, we can use a modulo. With the modulo, we wrap the indices so they only go in a range of 0 to 3. To achieve this, we need to set the modulo value to 4. Now it is time to generate our lookup table. We create a new node group for this. Inside of our lookup table, we generate a new group. This is a lookup table element. We add an integer input and call it bitmask. We will separate our geometry by using the bitmask. If the bitmask of the face is equal to the selected bitmask, it will keep the geometry. You can see that it works if we change the bitmask value of our face. Now we need to add the logic to remove vertices and triangulate our mesh. We create a new group and call it face element. Now it is time for some inputs. We need the face index, a triangulation boolean and a boolean to flip the triangulation. First we build our triangulation logic. If triangulation is false, we don't want to triangulate at all. If it is true, we want to decide if we want a normal or a flipped triangulation. If our face index is not equal to the selected face index, we simply delete the geometry. Now it is time to delete single vertices. Each face has four vertices. We compare our corners attribute to index from 0 to 3. Then we check if the result is true and compare this with the input for each of the four vertices. With this input we can decide if we want to keep or remove a vertex. We connect everything to all functions. And finally, we add a delete node. Now we have our face elements set up. We need four of them. One for each face of the original geometry. To manipulate all face elements from our lookup table, we need a lot of inputs. So let's input to flip the triangulation for the triangulation of all four faces and for all 16 vertices. We then need to connect all of the inputs.
And finally, each face element needs its face index set. Now it is time to populate our lookup table. We can simply do this by turning vertices on and off. In total, we need 16 lookup table elements. We turn on vertex 0 of our debug shape. Our shape needs to be a small triangle in the lower left corner. To achieve this, we need to triangulate the first face. Then we need to flip the triangulation and remove the unneeded vertices. Now we need to do the same for the other lookup table elements. This process might take some time. I will speed this up here. Right now we only get filled faces out of the marching squares. But I want to be able to also output lines only. For this we add a switch to output filled faces or lines. Then we duplicate our lookup table node group and convert it to a single user. In this node group we simply delete all the vertices that are not required for the mesh lines. Again, this process might take some time. Now it is time to see if everything works. We create a new geometry, add a geometry nodes modifier and replace the geometry with a subdivided grid. Then we add our marching squares node group, we connect the noise to our field and it works. Right now all faces are separated, so let's add a merge switch to our marching squares node group. Perfect! To get some nice shapes we can subdivide our result. Right now we are using a simple flat grid, but the whole system works on 3D shapes too. For best results the meshes should be made out of quads. You can remesh geometries to generate quad geometries, or you subdivide low res meshes once. Now it is time to optimize the setup a little bit. I was not really happy that I could only output faces or lines, but not both. So I changed the setup to have two geometry outputs. The second output gives you curves of the ISO lines. You can use those to generate new meshes.
And that's it. Now you know how to create a marching squares node group in Blender with geometry nodes. My approach is really simple and there might be more efficient ways to do it, but it gives you a clear understanding how the algorithm works. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Bye!